Hi everyone, I'm Miguel Arroyo, and together with Mohamed Tarek, we'll be presenting NOFAD, architectural support for low overhead memory safety checks. NOFAD is joint work with Mohamed, Evgeny Manchasov, Ryan Piersma, and Sema Sedumadavan. Now the lack of memory safety is a very serious problem. People can be discriminated against, spied on, and targeted due to memory safety vulnerabilities. Now unfortunately, this problem remains as current today as it has ever been. The reality is that memory safety vulnerabilities are very e easy for developers to introduce. Now just what is memory safety? Put simply, it's when you access memory in an unintended way. Think back to any time you've mistakenly overflowed a buffer or forgot to free memory. Now to put into context just how common these vulnerabilities are, consider that 70% of all CVEs in Microsoft products each year are memory safety related. And not to pick on Microsoft, but open source software doesn't fare any better with over 29% of bugs found in Google's OSS fuzz being memory safety related. So it seems that memory safety vulnerabilities are a big deal. And what makes the issues of memory safety so prominent is that attackers love memory safety vulnerabilities. Data about zero day exploits that were detected in the wild from Google Project Zero show that the overwhelming majority are memory safety related. But all hope is not lost. There has been some promising trends in software engineering. So the question is, can we take advantage of any of these trends to fix a memory safety problem? And the short answer is yes. Modern software design is useful for security. Now the key software design that we focus on is the increasing adoption of binning allocators. They are typically used to enhance performance by maintaining memory locality. Examples of binning memory allocators include JE malloc, which is used in Firefox, and it's also used in the FreeBSD as a default allocator. There's also memalloc from Microsoft and TC malloc from Google. Now in this work, we will show how making the hardware aware of binning memory allocator primitives can have multiple benefits. Now to name a few, it can be used to improve fuzzing, runtime security, and resilience to Spectre v1 attacks. Now let's start with a crash course on binning memory allocators. Let's consider a simple program with one main function that is defined in line 40. Here, the program wants to reserve some memory to operate on. So, it invokes malloc, as shown in line 41, and it gives it the required size, here, 12. Now, this call to malloc invokes the memory allocator, which is supposed to allocate 12 bytes on the heap. And then it returns a starting address to the program to continue execution. Now, in order to accelerate the malloc functionality, binning memory allocators divide the virtual memory into different regions called bins. Each bin is used to allocate objects of a specific size. For example, allocation requests that are less than 16 bytes come from region A. Allocation requests that are greater than 16 bytes and less than 32 bytes come from region B, and so on. As each region holds allocations of the same rounded size, given any pointer, we can derive its allocation size and base address. Now the allocation size is the size used in this particular region, whereas the base address is the nearest size aligned address in the same region. Now bear with me and we'll flesh out the calculations in a bit. Now for now, it seems that binning allocators have some nice properties, but how can we use those properties and turn them into a security primitive? Now let's start with a simple security problem, inter-object spatial memory safety. Now in this case, adjacent objects can overflow into each other, resulting in information leakage, memory corruption, or even control flow hijacking. And the question is, how can NoFAT detect this? Now let's explain this further by going back to our example. Let's assume that after the memory is allocated, our program issues a store instruction to write the value A to pointer index 1. With no fat, every load and store instruction will have one more operand, which we call the trusted base. And this operand is propagated using the compiler from the malloc output to the store input. Now it's fairly easy for the store instruction to verify access bounds. And the steps are straightforward. The hardware first extracts the trusted base and the address, in this case, pointer index one, and subtracts them from each other to get the offset. Then it retrieves the size of the trusted base pointer using the binning allocator metadata. And finally, it compares the offset of the size and flags a violation if the offset is not less than the size. So in short, we make the allocation size information available to the hardware to help it verify memory accesses. 
Now let's make the example a bit more complicated. We'll take the pointer and pass it to another function, foo, via direct call as shown in line 49. Inside foo, we will write some value b to the x pointer index 7 as shown in line 53. So, similar to the main function, the store instruction from line 53 should use a trusted base as a third operand. The question is, how can we get the x pointer's trusted base? Well, we can pass it explicitly as a second argument to foo, but that solution will change the function signature and break binary compatibility. Instead, we just recompute it using a compute base instruction. Now, this instruction takes advantage of the bidding memory allocators as follows. First, it gets the region of this pointer using a simple shift operation. Then, it retrieves the region size from the bidding allocator metadata. And finally, it computes the base by dividing the pointer by the size, rounding it down, and multiplying it by the size again to get rid of the remainder. Now we have our new base address without pa passing any explicit operands between functions. Now one might ask, what is going to happen if a pointer arithmetic operation in the main function pushes the pointer out of bounds before passing it to foo? Now in this case, foo will then receive an out of bounds pointer and will compute a wrong trusted base. Now to avoid such problematic situations, we always verify the bounds of all pointers that escape to memory or to another function. We do so with a simple instruction that takes the escape pointer and its original trusted base as inputs. If the pointer is already out of bounds, we flag a violation at line 44, and it will not be passed to foo. If the pointer is in bounds, we are guaranteed that foo will receive a valid input. This way, we can cover inter-object spatial memory safety. But what about intra-object memory safety? Now, adjacent fields within the same location can be overflowed into. To achieve fine-grained intra-object memory safety, NoFAT adopts the buffer to pointer promotion trick. We simply promote every intra-allocation buffer to a standalone allocation and replace it with a pointer using a source-to-source -source transformation. This way, all intra-object buffers will be protected using the regular NoFAT protection. Now for completeness, NoFAT also supports a degree of temporal memory safety. As you may know, for performance reasons, memory regions that are recently freed are typically assigned to new allocation requests. That means that a dangling pointer that used to point to the old allocation can still be used to access the new allocation, causing severe security threats. Now to fix this issue, we add a random tag for every pointer upon malloc and verify it versus the base tag upon memory accesses. Dangling pointers can then be detected as they are likely to have a different tag than the one used by the newly allocated object. Now as we understand the basic components of our proposal, Mohammed will walk you through the needed architectural changes for enabling NoFAT. Hello everyone, I am Mohammed Tariq and I will be your host during the second part of this talk. In order to implement NoFAT, we add the following ICA extensions. We use new store and load instructions with three register operands to hold the memory address, destination or source operand, and the trusted base address. We also use a verify pounds instruction in order to verify the allocation pounds of pointers that are stored in memory or moved from one function to another. Exceptions are drawn in the case that the target memory address does not match the base address. Finally, we use combi-based instruction to compute the trusted base address whenever a pointer is loaded from memory. At the microarchitectural level, NoFAT requires minimal modifications. Unlike traditional memory safety techniques, which frequently access per pointer or per allocation metadata, that has to be stored in the entire memory hierarchy, increasing pole, memory, and communication overheads, NoFAT requires no metadata. As a result, no changes to the memory subsystems are required at all. Instead, NoFAT changes are internal to the core. For example, in order to make allocation sizes available to the hardware, we use a one kilobyte memory allocation sizes table or MAST, just to keep track of the allocation sizes used by the memory allocator in different regions. 
This way, we avoid accessing the allocator metadata to retrieve the region size for every memory access. As the size of this table is small, it is easily swapped out and in upon process context switch. Next, NoFAT uses a bounds checker to validate all memory accesses as we described earlier in this talk. Finally, NoFAT uses a dedicated register file for base addresses to avoid adding any register pressure on the regular register file. Now, as we explained how NoFAT is implemented, it is time to put the security benefits in more concrete terms. So let's look at a handful of common exploits and how NoFAT mitigates them. Here we have a classic buffer overflow. We have two buffers side by side, A and B, and we want to override B from a pointer in A. Under normal conditions, the overflow would reliably corrupt B. With no fat in place, an exception will be thrown once buffer A goes out of its own bounds. That's because our no store instructions are aware of the allocation bounds. Another very common exploit technique involves leveraging use after freeze. As no fat uses a random 16 bit tag for every new allocation, Dangling pointers that used to point to the old allocation will be detected as they are likely to have different tags. Finally, let's look at the speculative execution advice. The code snippet here is a minimal example of Spectre V1, which is also known as bounds checking bypass. Normally, the load from A of I to secret can be reliably accessed with an out of bounds index I. However, with no fat in place, Speculative load instructions are aware of the legitimate allocation bounds. As a result, speculative out of bounds loads are not allowed to change the cache state or forward values to dependent instructions, effectively breaking the attack. Now, let us talk about the performance cost of NoFAT. We first evaluate the hardware cost of our modifications. Our VLSI results show that NoFAT has minimal latency area and power overheads. In terms of the software modifications cost, our special loads and stores do not change the binary size as they simply replace traditional memory access instructions. However, we still need to verify the pointer bounds before storing them to memory and compute the allocation base address of arbitrary bounds whenever they are loaded from memory. To emulate the performance overheads of these extra operations on a real x86-64 machine, we wrote an LLVM compiler pass to emit dummy instructions to replace compase and verify bounds. We used two multiplications followed by a store to emulate the steps of compase, which we explained earlier. We also emulate verify bounds with dummy store instructions. The reason why we use dummy store instructions is simply to prevent the compiler optimizations from removing them. Now, I'm going to show you the slowdowns for using NoFAT. Using the spec 2017 benchmarks on a real machine, NoFAT causes 8% slowdowns on average compared to baseline execution. To further understand the source of such slowdowns, we rerun our experiments with just the pinning memory allocator without performing any extra memory safety operations at all. The performance overheads of organizing heap, stack, and global memory into pins is 4%. To show the performance benefits of our hardware design, we also run a software-only version of NoFAT, which introduces a 100% performance degradation. Running the state-of-the-art address sanitizer on the same benchmarks causes 107% overheads, meaning that NoFAT can provide almost 10x speed up when used for fuzzing software during testing. For completeness, we also evaluated Intel MPX, the state-of-the-art commercial solution for memory safety. Again, NoFAT offers much lower overheads and better security. So in short, NoFAT reduces the average runtime overheads of full memory safety from 100% to 8%.
but to what about the other memory safety techniques? Well, the key point of any memory safety technique is how it handles its metadata or the allocation bounds information and its security coverage. So memory tagging techniques like ARMNTE and Spark EDI assign colors to every memory allocation and store the color in the pointer upper pits to avoid changing the pointer layout. Fortunately, the security coverage of memory tagging techniques is limited by the tag weights, which is typically four to eight bits. On the other hand, tripwires based solutions like REST and Califorms completely avoid the pair pointer metadata and they embed the pair allocation metadata within program data itself. While those techniques have comparable performance overheads to no fat, they have lower security coverage as they are susceptible to non-adjacent overflows. Explicit pays and bounds techniques such as Sherry increase pointer widths by extra bits in order to store the allocation bounds information. While such techniques provide high security coverage, the additional per pointer metadata makes pointer operations more expensive. Moreover, they tend to break compatibility with the rest of the systems like unprotected libraries, for example. In contrast, NoFAT has a fixed size metadata table where the entire process while maintaining security against adjacent and non-adjacent overflows, of course, when a pending allocator is used. So due to its metadata less nature and simple hardware support, NoFAT improves fast testing, runtime security, and resilience against Spectre V1 with just 8% runtime overheads and no changes to the memory subsystem. If end users are not willing to pay the 8% overheads for complete memory safety, lightweight exploit mitigation techniques such as Zero can be used. So please check out our other SK2021 paper that provides resilient operation under pointer integrity attacks with zero runtime overheads. Finally, keep in mind that the NoFAT benefits go well beyond memory safety. Having the allocation size as an architectural feature can help accelerate garbage collectors for memory safe languages and enhancing the predictability of memory prefetchers and DRAM controllers. That's it for today. Thank you for listening and please reach out if you have any questions.